I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on polynomials. Here is a quiz on this topic. We have taken eight questions from previous test paper. You can always pause the video, copy these questions, solve them, and then look into my suggestions. I think you can see the first five questions. Here are the other three, right? So these are the questions which we are going to take one by one and then solve. It will also give me an opportunity to explain few basic concepts. Question number one here is, find the degree of each polynomial. Now this is a monomial, only one term is given to us, and degree of this will be add the exponents, right? So remember, this is a constant. This is a constant, right? And these are the variables. So when we talk about degree, we add the exponents of the variables when they are multiplied. So if nothing is written, that means it is 1, correct? So basically, the degree will be 4 plus 6, which is 10, plus 1, which is 11. So degree will be 11 in this case, correct? Do not add 3, which corresponds to 2, right? It could have been written as 8 also. The second is a binomial. We have two terms here. So in this, we have to count the degree of each uh, term and the highest will form the degree of the polynomial. So here, the degree is 5 plus, plus 1, 6. In this case, it is 3 plus 2, 5, right? So, so the answer will be uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6, right? Which corresponds to the first term. That is the degree of your polynomial, correct? Question number 2. Expand and simplify. 2 minus a minus b times 2a plus b minus a plus b whole square. Now for this, you could use the formula, right? So let me give you the formula here. We have a plus b times a minus b is equal to a square minus b square, right? You can always expand with foil and then see that this is your result a plus b let me write a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square correct so we're going to use this formula and then we'll expand and simplify so i could now write the polynomial 2a minus b times 2a plus b minus a plus b whole square as equal to square of the first term is 4a square right minus b square minus now this it is better to write within brackets we have a square plus 2ab plus b square correct now 4a square minus a square is 3a squared. So we are just combining the like terms. Minus b squared and that is also minus b squared. So it becomes minus 2b squared. And the third term here will be minus 2ab. So minus 2ab, right? So that is how you are going to get the answer. Well, you could always add a step here by uh, writing them as like this, like terms together. 4a squared minus a squared and we have minus b squared open this bracket we get minus b squared and for the third term minus 2ab so you could actually arrange and then find your answer so that is also perfectly fine if you're not using the formula you may first multiply right and then combine and then do it you could do that also However, at this stage, if you know the formulas, you could always use them directly as shown here. Okay? Question number three. We need to solve this equation, which is x plus 2 over 3 equals to 2x plus 3 over 5. Now, the best strategy here is to cross multiply. So, 
So when you cross multiply, you get 5 times x plus 2 equals to 3 times 2x plus 3, right? Now we are going to open the brackets. We get 5x plus 10 equals to 3 times 2 is 6 plus 3 times 3 which is 9. Now bring the terms together. Now 6x is higher so I'll take these terms to the right. So all the x values to the side. So we get 10 here and 9 to this side. So we get 10 minus 9 equals to 6x minus 5x. Does it make sense to you? So what I did was is that I subtracted 5x from both the sides, right? And I also then subtracted 9 from both the sides. So when you do that, this is what you get. Perfect. And now we know from the right side it is x and 10 minus 9 is 1. So x is equal to 1 is your answer, right? What you could also do now is, as an addition, check your answer or solution, correct? So if that is a part of the equation, substitute and check, right? So let's do it. So if you are supposed to check, I get 1 plus 2 over 3. This is my left side, okay? Right side here is 2 times 1 plus 3 over 5. So this is 3 over 3, which is equal to 1. Here we get what? 2 plus 3 is 5. So we get 5 over 5, which is also equal to 1. And we know both are equal. Correct? So it is the correct solution. Is that clear? Next question here. Question number 4 is, express the formula of volume of sphere in terms of its diameter d in simplified form. Normally this formula will be given to you. Volume of sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube, where r is the radius, right? Now this formula is normally given. Now the question is express the formula of volume of sphere in terms of its diameter. So, so how do you relate it? Well, diameter d is equal to radius times 2, or we could write this as 2r, right? So that is the relation. Or you can say half of the diameter is the radius r. So we'll substitute r with d over 2, right? So that is the substitution you need to do. Then you get the volume as equals to 4 over 3 pi. And instead of radius, we'll write half of the diameter. That is radius, right? Q. Now we can actually open this bracket. So we get 4 over 3 pi diameter cube over 2 cube which is 8 right now this can be simplified so 4 goes 2 times and now we can write this as pi diameter cube divided by 6 right so that becomes the volume so that becomes the expression so let me write down this expression finally as volume will be equals to pi d cube over 6, right? So that's the way to write it. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Let's move on and take the next question, which is question number 5. It's a word problem. It says the cost in dollars of production of producing n posters is 3.5 n plus 450. The income in dollars from the sales is 5 n. So we are given the cost which is equals to 3.5 n plus 450, right? We are given income which is i as 5 times n. Now part a is write a simplified formula for profit. So a is we want to write what profit is. So profit is basically income take away cost, right? So in our case, we'll write P for profit. Income is 5N minus the cost. Good to write it in brackets. Otherwise, sometimes you can make a mistake of not converting this to negative, right? So write this whole cost now. We could open this bracket and simplify. So we have 5n 
minus 3.5n minus 450. So we get profit equals to 1.5n minus 450. So that becomes your formula for profit in the given situation. Is that clear to you, right? Now, part B is find profit from producing and selling 325 posters. So we are given N equals to 325, correct? So we need to find the profit. So profit will be 1.5 times 325 minus 450, correct? So let's use calculator for now. If it is allowed, this is a good thing. Otherwise, you can do this calculation without calculator also. So 1.5 times 325, that is going to be a decimal number, right? So let's write it in two decimal places. So we get 487.50 minus 450, right? So we'll take away 450 from this and then that gives us a value of 37.50. Now, whenever you're talking about dollars, we should go to two decimal places. So we can now write the profit as equal to, in dollars, 37 and 50 cents. Clear? So that is how this question can be solved. Right? So now, let's take question number six. Question number six is, a circle is inscribed in a square. Find the ratio of their areas. So we have a circle here and this circle is inscribed in a square. That means what? That means square is outside, right? So we have a square which touches it, right? So it is kind of like this. So that is my approximate drawing and that is my square, right? So when we are saying square, it means that all the sides of the square are of same length. So we have circle of radius r. So we'll take a circle with radius equals to r. In that case, side length will be how much? Side length of squares will be how much? Let's say it is s it is going to be r plus r, which is 2r, correct? So it will be twice r, correct? So that is kind of important to understand. Now we need to find ratio of their area, right? So let's say area of circle over area of square. Now area of circle is pi r square. And area of square is side length times side length, which is 2R whole square, correct? So that becomes the ratio. So we could simplify this. We could write this as pi R square. And here we get 4R square. So R square and R square cancel. So we get pi by 4 as the ratio, right? So if you write this as area of circle over area of square, you'll get pi by 4. If you put it the other way, it'll be 4 over pi. Is it correct? So that is how you can give the exact value. So I hope that makes sense, right? Now this is kind of very important exercise, as in many cases, you may have to work on this, right? Okay, now let's move on and take uh, question number 7. Simplify. So we'll practice how to work with product of uh, polynomials. So we have 3 over 4 a cube b to the power of 4 times minus 4 over 5 a b to the power of minus 6. So let's rewrite this. So we have 3 over 4. So when you open the bracket, you have to multiply the numbers with the numbers times we have 4 over 5, right? 4 over 5. Now this is a negative sign. That means the whole thing will be negative. And now we have a cube b to the power of 4 times a b to the power of minus 6. So that is how it is. We can actually cancel these 4s and we can write this as minus 3 over 5. a powers will be 3 plus 1 which is 4. As far as b is concerned, 4 minus 6, which is minus 2. 
Now, it is a good practice to always write your answer with positive exponents. So, we get minus 3 a to the power of 4 and in the denominator we get 5 b square. Correct? So, that becomes your answer. So, I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Now, let's take part b which is p to the power of 2m. Let me rewrite this. p to the power of 2m plus 3n, right, divided by p to the power of m minus 2n. So that is the question given to us. So using the exponent rules, we get this as p to the power of 2m plus 3n minus, put it in brackets, m minus 2n, correct? So that gives you p to the power of 2m minus m, which is m, right? You can write like this, 2m minus m plus 3n minus and minus becomes positive 2n, correct? And so we get our answer as p to the power of m plus 5n. Is it clear to you? So these are the steps which will lead to the right solution. Now here is the last question, which is question number 8. It says... Six baseballs fit snugly into a box in the shape of a rectangular prism. Find the ratio of volume of the ball to the volume of the box. So we have six balls. Let's look into it. So let's say they are six balls. So one, two. So we'll assume they are with the same radius, right? So or the same diameter, right? So we have four of them now, five, and then the sixth one. So we have these six um, baseballs which are in a box, which is a rectang uh, with, with rectangular size, rectangular prism, right? So that means that is our length and width, right? And this is definitely three-dimensional, so we have this width. Now this width will be same as the diameter of our balls, correct? So so this we are looking from that side now let us say that the radius of each ball is r right so let's say this radius is r in that case what should be this length that is what you need to figure out so radius of each ball is r let's say right in that case dimensions will be what now there are six of them, so that means 2r, right? So 2r times 6. So this is 2r times 6, which is 12r. So that becomes 12r. So one side, the length of this prism will be 12r, correct? Now this side will be the diameter, which is 2r, uh, sorry, uh, which will be, let me write down this side as 2r, and the height will also be 2r, correct? So all the sides of this prism, other two, width and the height, will be 2r. So now we can actually find the volume of both. So let's figure out the volume of balls, right? So volume of baseballs is, there are six of them, and each, this is a sphere, right? So, so we can say volume of sphere Let's write down the formulas, right? So volume of sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube, correct? And volume of prism is length into width into height, correct? So these are the formulas which we are going to use. Now in this case, there are 6 of them. So it is 6 times 4 by 3 pi r cube, right? So, which is a uh, volume of six baseballs. So, which is, you can divide and then multiply. So, two times four is eight, right? So, we get eight pi r cube. So, that is one thing. Now, what is the volume of uh, prism? So volume of prism, you found the dimensions to be 12R, 2R, and 2R. So it'll be 12R times 2R times 2R, right? 
so which is equals to uh, 4 times 12 which is 48 r cube right so that is what you get so we need to find the ratio of the volumes correct so let's write down the ratio now so the ratio will be volume of uh, let's write the bigger one first prism on the top and volume of balls which is uh, six balls in this case and the denominator so we get this as 48 r cube divided by so 8 pi r cube right 8 pi r cube so the radius r cube r cube will cancel right so, so when you divide 48 by 8 you get 60 right so it is 6 times 8 is 48 so we get 6 over pi so that is your answer you could always uh, um, you know use calculator write a decimal value or you can just leave it like this sometimes we could use 22 over 7 for pi and get our answer right so anyway let's use calculator and round it to two decimal places 6 divided by pi which is equal to 1.909 correct so we'll just say approximately 1.9 so our answer here is that the ratio is 1.9 right so almost double so i hope that makes sense so that is how we can actually solve these questions based on polynomials so we kind of uh, had a good review of on polynomials how to find their degree how to expand and simplify them and how to work with simple word problems now in the next uh, video related to polynomials we'll take up uh, working with uh, polynomials in a bigger way i hope this gives you a good foundation feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for your time and all the best